What does it mean that Jesus is called the cornerstone? Acts chapter 4, verses 11 through 12. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Let's say that you lived in ancient times and you wanted to construct a building. You wanted to make something that was sturdy, something that would stand the test of time, even through the toughest conditions. What material would you choose? And remember, this is before the time of steel and iron. You're probably going to pick stone if you're anything like those ancient architects. Okay, so you've selected your material and you're ready to build. It's time to lay the very first stone. But wait, you have to be very careful because the first stone is really critical. For one, you need to make sure that the first stone is level, because if it's not, then all the stones that are laid around it aren't going to be either, and your building is going to end up crooked. You also need to make sure that the sides of your stone line up with the intended direction of the building, so maybe you want it to face north. But if the sides of the stone are off just a little bit, your building might end up facing slightly northeast. To ancient architects, the first stone was so critical that it got its own title, it became known as the cornerstone. And the craftsman probably spent more time on the cornerstone than any other stone in the entire structure. Its measurements were the basis for the rest of the building, and if that stone was wrong, the whole building could be ruined. But if the stone was right, it provided a guide for structural integrity and for the longevity of the building. Now the prophets in the Old Testament, prophets like Isaiah, foretold that God was going to begin a construction project of sorts. God himself was going to lay a cornerstone on which he was going to build a spiritual house. And as we read through the Gospels about the life of Jesus, we find out that he was the intended cornerstone. He was the foundation on which everything that God was doing was going to be based. Everything was to be aligned according to Jesus. As we read throughout the rest of the New Testament, we figure out that God's house, his spiritual house, where he dwells, is in his church, in his disciples. Paul tells the Christians at Corinth that they are a temple in which God's spirit dwells. And then Peter, in his first letter, he tells the disciples that they are each stones that are being built up into a spiritual house, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. And so the idea is, Anyone who aligns themselves with Christ is going to be part of an eternally stable structure, a building that is never going to be destroyed. But those who reject the cornerstone, reject Jesus, and refuse to bring their lives in alignment with him, they're going to suffer the, fa the same fate as all man-made buildings or institutions. Eventually, in time, they're going to crumble away. So we need to build our lives around the only thing that's going to last, Jesus. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the members of the household of God. Build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure, being joined together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord. In him, you also are being built together into a dwelling place for God, by the Spirit.